The following are the words of Lou Savello, president of the Suffolk County Police Benevolent Association. Police officers risk their lives to protect our communities and keep our streets safe. These officers are the thin blue line that stands between your family and the criminals that would do them harm. We are your neighbors protecting your neighborhood. Hold the line. Support law enforcement. Stand with the Suffolk County PBA. The following radio show is live, except for the announcement you're hearing right now. Welcome back to Your Island Live with your host, Tom Shalero on 103.9 LI News Radio. And once again, welcome back as we're moving right along in a very, very exciting week. The week before Decision Day, November 5th. And uh, certainly we'll be talking uh, a lot about politics and the importance of involvement, the importance of getting involved, the importance of actually voting for the right folks that make our lives lives better here in Suffolk County. I couldn't think of a better person right now. As you all know, Lou Savilla, president of the Suffolk County PBA, is with us every other week. And, uh, you know, we take up, uh, I'm going to use a very famous word, eclectic point of view on a lot of different uh, uh, subjects and so on. And I want to talk a little politics with Lou. Uh, our police officers uh, during their off time will actually get involved in campaigns because they realize they live in the same neighborhoods that we do. They understand the issues that we do. And I think uh, when we we have our fraternal order of police organizations or our PBAs uh, and our, our fraternal uh, police organizations throughout the throughout the country. They they're on. I think they're on the pulse and they're on the pulse of what uh, what this country needs in terms of safety and security. And I want to talk a little bit about that with the Lou Savilla. Lou, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Thanks, Tom. Great to be back with you. Now, these are busy times for you folks. I know you went out there. I mean, you do so much. But the mere fact that uh, you will look at candidates and you guys will interview candidates and so on. And that's being done all over the country. It's certainly not uh, unique uh, to New York State. We see uh, organizations do this throughout. Uh, you had a great uh, ceremony. We talked about it on this program uh, when the, the decision was made uh, to endorse Donald Trump at the top of the ticket. And uh, that was something that... Uh, or the issues were put out there on a national basis. And, and I guess we all understood that and we saw that and we say, well, yeah, well, the, the natural choice would be uh, to, dis, to, to endorse Donald Trump because he speaks the language, the language of safety, security, uh, helping our police, supporting our police, which supports our neighborhoods. And I think that's the big connection that we all need to make, that it's not just one sided here. Uh, and and I think a lot of people do realize that. So I, I just I, I wanted to bring this out to the folks out out there is is what was the criteria? Now again, there's legislation that has to be changed. It's legislation that has to be changed for law enforcement and criminal justice, but it's also legislation that has to be changed uh, for the neighborhoods and also legislation that has to be proposed. So when you sat down and again, and this is some job to sit with all these different candidates and ask a lot of questions and hopefully the answers are answers that that you can at least hang your hat on uh what was the criteria what were some of the questions i don't want to give you too much in one in one question but how did you make a decision like that go ahead lou Savillo. sure and i'm actually glad you asked that tom so it, it's a it's a very very exacting criteria when we take a look at candidates and, and i'll use uh president trump as an example and, and it's a question we've got a lot. We've got a lot of comments on social media about, you know, how we make that endorsement, why we make that endorsement. And I actually took the time, Tom, to write um, to write an essay that will be in or is in this week's Messenger, mm. our, uh, our local county paper mm. Messenger. There's a, an extensive essay in there by me going point by point, you know, saying why we made that endorsement and what criteria we use. You know, for instance, uh, their policy and positions, right? What they have done, and in this instance, we have um, a very unique advantage in a race where both candidates had already been incumbents, right? We had uh, Donald Trump did four years in office, and uh, the vice president uh, Kamala Harris has been in office, uh, you know, for over three and a half years now. So, what they've done, uh, the positions they've supported, the fact that um, you know equipment, 1033 program, that federal program that provides us with those life-saving uh, things that we need, long guns, armored vehicles, bulletproof vests, the fact that Donald Trump uh, uh, restored that program and under Vice President Harris that program was cut. So instances like that, the uh, justice in policing, the George Floyd law where she wants to take away our qualified immunity, uh, would allow police officers to be sued personally, even when they're acting in good faith. Uh, Donald Trump stands against that. Um, the fact that he supports the death penalty for cop killers, those who assassinate police officers, 
uh, where when she was a prosecutor, and she loves to tout her record as a prosecutor, she refused to seek the death penalty for the murder of a San Francisco yeah. police officer. Yeah. Um, so instances, instances like that, things that people may not necessarily know, um, if you take a look at that essay, I go point by point, you can find that in the messenger, but you can also find it uh, on our voter guide. So we uh, published a voter guide, www.suffolkpba.org forward slash vote. So it's easy, just our organization name, .org forward slash vote. And you're going to see a complete guide to each of the candidates that we endorsed, uh, why we feel that they are the right candidate in terms of public safety. Um, you know, and I think you're right, Tom. My members are out there. Our members are out there in force. Uh, we have over 1,200 members, active and retired. We have retired guys coming out, too, yeah. that are actually door knocking. They're engaging with the public. Um, they're out there talking about the candidates that we're supporting and why we're supporting them. And I think it's uh, it, it's incredible that the members are disengaged and they have a vested interest in keeping this county safe. Uh, like you said, we live here, our children live here, and we see it first. I think yeah. in a lot of regards, Tom, you know, the public doesn't know until somebody, you know, crawls under your car and cuts out your catalytic converter. Uh, yeah. But our police officers are seeing how dangerous it is every day. They're yeah. seeing the effects of these reckless laws. And because we see it so early, it really motivates us to get out yeah. and get involved. See, that's, that's the message I, I want to put forth. I think that's important. You know, in our own daily lives, the average person doesn't necessarily think about that, but also does have a fear of, of crime or a fear of being a victim of crime and uh, living in neighborhoods that are safe. And we have done that here, but it cannot be done without the backing of government. You know, when you have a president of the United States that said that I will make sure our police officers have qualified immunity, or you have a president of the United States that seeks clemency uh, for murderers and cop killers and so on, or won't give them the death penalty. Uh, you know, Again, there's a big difference between the two. And, you know, I want to bring an example in that's something that uh, I had seen over the, uh, in the last uh, week or so, you may have seen the same thing. You know, these, this new gang, this uh, TR, whatever you, they, this new gang that's coming in, uh, from I think it's Venezuela and uh, or Argentina, one of the Venezuela, and uh, uh, they they are taking over apartment buildings in certain sin in Aurora, Colorado. And I was able to see the the video of that. These are dangerous people. You could clearly see it carrying these firearms. These are these people have murder in their hearts. They have homicide written all over them. And why is that? Because we have open borders. But think about this, and I don't have to tell you to think about it, but I'm telling the listeners to think about it. Who's going to bring them to justice? Who's going to get them from those apartments that are carrying guns and all they want to do is kill somebody? It's the local police. They're going to be on the front lines. So it has to be an involvement in, in politics. It, we have to go with uh, those candidates that will support a border that is safe, a border that doesn't allow these individuals to come over and then catch and release and all this other stuff. You know, and Kamala Harris, uh, you know, to her detriment, uh, did not in the beginning believe in, in, in criminalization of anybody that crossed the border. But you've got to see these individuals. I don't know if you saw that same video, but these are dangerous yeah. dudes, Lou. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah, it, these are ultra-violent gangs, uh, and we're seeing it here. You know, it's creeping its way out to Suffolk County. Uh, we are a, a yeah. sanctuary state, and it's facilitating the flow of violent criminals and fentanyl, the, these deadly drugs, over our border and into our communities. We had over 400 fentanyl deaths. It's around 400 every year, Tom, and it's only yeah. getting higher and higher. Yeah. And these are young people. Yeah. These are our children that are dying from this poisonous drug, and it's it's coming into this country, Right. It starts in China, you know, this is where the drugs are manufactured, and then it's facilitated by the drug cartels uh, in through the southern border. And it's a national security issue. Uh, it's an issue for our communities. It's an issue for our police officers. It's deadly, and it is really uh, the fault of the administration. The administration yes. is currently open. This yeah. vice president, who yeah. the border czar, who has been an abject failure in protecting our communities. <clears throat> See, that was one of the first things I thought when I saw those thugs breaking the lock on that and then occupying these buildings. I said, "Who? there's going to be some sector cop that's going to get called for a disturbance, that's going to confront these individuals. And these are extremely dangerous people. And who do we have to blame? We have to blame a a border policy that started on January 20th, uh, 2021, where we had our heads screwed on backwards when they signed off on that. So now is the time. And again, uh, I keep saying this. What's good for law enforcement is good for the folks. It puts us back into a more rounded country. 
And if anything, we get anything from the discussion that you and I are having right now. Right after you is our DA. He's coming on at the 105 hour. And he's going to talk about this. And I'm read the headlines. Bellport man indicted as a major trafficker after largest fentanyl seizure in Suffolk history. When did fentanyl start coming across the border as much? It was in the last three or four years. So what, to, to allude to what you just said, it is here. It is happening here, uh, the, the 400 fentanyl deaths uh, that are taking place. So there is no divorce between uh, the wants and needs of law enforcement and the wants and needs of a community. And, and we have to really underscore that and how important it is that the right people get elected. I know I'm very passionate about this, but it's something that uh, we've got to make people see. That you cannot no longer talk about defunding or open borders and, as you mentioned, sanctuary this and sanctuary that. It's dangerous times, Lou Savillo. It, it is. And, and you can see this for yourself. I'm on our website. We've posted the links where Kamala Harris actually says she supports defunding the police, that she supports uh, removing our budgets and, and applying it to things like social workers. Just ludicrous, ludicrous sentiments. And, uh, you know, it, it was very interesting, Tom, is, uh, o- over the weekend I had read that um, op-ed by Jeff Bezos, the, o- the owner of Amazon, mm. also the owner of, um, of the Washington Post. And he writes this op-ed about why they chose, uh, and this is a, a liberal, liberal paper, they chose not to make an endorsement yeah. Yeah. in this presidential election. And he opines on why. And he opines that people are just flocking away from the Washington Post, canceling their subscriptions, uh, people are moving towards alternative media to places like your show, Tom, to get reliable information. Um, but he, he laments it, but he doesn't lament it and say, hey, you know, what are we doing wrong in terms of why are, why don't people trust us? It, it, uh, he just laments it in, in terms of, hey, we can't get away with it anymore. So we got to switch our tactics. We got to switch our game. I mean, the reality is, Tom, these papers have lied, right? This traditional media has lied again and again and again. And that's why people are moving to reliable sources. They want to hear it from the ground. That's why they want to hear it from people that are in the public safety sector, from the police officers that are living it every yes. single day yes. for reliable information. Yes. And I and I, I applaud your audience um, who is active and engaged and educating themselves. Yes. I would say go to our website, take a look. Take a look at what Kamala has had to say herself. Take a look at President Trump. We've also posted that there where he did the, the Joe Rogan podcast just a few days ago, and you can listen to him talk about attending the funeral of NYPD officer Jonathan Diller and what that meant to him and what police officers yeah. face every day walking yeah. up to a car not knowing what's going to happen. And you can see the stark difference in the two candidates. So uh, less of believing what yeah, these papers with an agenda to uh, make their billionaire owners richer right. have to say and more of what uh, you know regular people who live and work in these neighborhoods, um, you know, when you want your news, that's that's the place to go. Yeah. You, you think, I'm going to tell you this, I, I think it's working. Uh, let, let's let's take us closer to home here, Suffolk County. It's uh, our, our main interest, our geographic interest that we have right now. And I got the call this morning, over 100,000 people here in Suffolk County, Lou, have already voted. And I found that amazing number. And I think a lot of it has to do with the work that you folks are doing on the ground by going out and educating voters. And you just didn't start yesterday. You guys have been on the ground for a while now uh, talking about candidates, talking about issues, talking how important it is. And uh, whether your vocation is a police officer or your vocation is uh, anything else, uh, it doesn't matter. It's the issues are still the same. The common bond that 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 uh, we all we all share is to make our area safe and to make it a great place to live. Uh, are you surprised at that number? A hundred thousand as of this morning. I tell you, I, I am. Uh, I am. I'm, I'm shocked at how engaged the community is. I went to vote. You know, it took me uh, to over an hour to early vote, and yeah. people are are out. I think they're tired of the nonsense. They're tired of being victimized, of, of seeing, like I said, uh, you know, coming out and your car stolen or yeah. your converter is is ripped out of the bottom of your car, and, and we know it. They're, they're, they're tired of seeing police officers bloodied, yeah. bludgeoned, of cop killers being released in this state here in New York. Um, you know, I think people open the paper in the morning and they get sick, you know, for one story after another. And they've, quite frankly, had enough. Um, I think the voters, uh, they know what's at stake in this election, uh, and people aren't waiting. They're not waiting until Election Day. They're getting it done early, which is something I would suggest for everyone and you have to vote down ballot. Take a look at that yes. voter uh, yeah. the voter guide that we put out there, the candidates that we're supporting, um, those races that are going to be tight races, the, uh, the Cardinale race, 
um, the Stephen Kiley race, the Ed Flood race, uh, Tony Palumbo, um, who has supported law enforcement for years. We've endorsed him. These are important races, Tom, yeah. because this is, you know, this is where we get bail reform. This is where we get raise the age. It's all at the state level. And if we don't support candidates that are going to stand up to this nonsense, well, we're doomed here. We're doomed. And, and I, I, officers, I, we've been handcuffed. I, I think the uh, law enforcement, uh, for lack of a better term, lobby or the law enforcement interests uh, binding together with different law enforcement organizations that we've done here in Nassau and Suffolk County uh, to make that concerted effort uh, to choose the right individuals. On Thursdays uh, on my show, I do the uh, Albany Report, and uh, my regulars are Senator Murray, uh, Assemblyman Doug Smith, Assemblywoman Jody Giglio, and and. Your issues. All endorsed the, by the Suffolk PBA, Tom. By the way. Oh, okay, and I, I, I'm glad you said that because we need to uh, we need to underscore that. But you know, there's no surprise to me because we, we we come up with issues. We don't have to talk about it in a political sense. We talk about it in a practical sense of how important it is to change legislation to get rid of that damn bail reform, which I think has really stymied uh, the work of our great cops. And our cops can only do so much uh, without the support of that qualified immunity. Finally, restoring fifty. FDA, all of that. And I, see, I, I'm not trying to be a, an idealist. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I think as long as this political force exists, I mean, the united force with, with law enforcement agencies in, in, in concert with the community, I think could work. And, uh, and, you know, again, my optimism is going to stay that way. And it's going to stay that way while people, while the 100,000 plus people have voted already and another 100,000 will vote probably before decision day, which is what I'm calling election day because we are electing right now, uh, I think will have an impact. And I, I guess I could say to you, uh, you were part of the interviews with all these individuals. Are you happy with the, with the, with the crop of a legislators that, that, that you did endorse versus the ones that you didn't endorse? Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we're very happy. Uh, you know, we've endorsed people with proven track records when it comes to public safety. And, you know, those uh, newcomers, we vet them. Um, we look at their policies. We look at uh, what they plan to do. And we, we make a decision from there. I think uh, the endorsements that we have made, we have people that are going to stand up to some of this woke nonsense. They're going to yeah. stand up for our police officers. They're going to look to restore that 50A law. They're going to look to finally... Just make some rational changes. Tom. That's all we're asking for. And, and I, I said this again and again. Nobody deserves uh, to have the justice that they get matter about how much money they have in their wallet. That's not what we're looking for here when it comes to bail reform, right? There shouldn't be one set of justice for rich people and, and, and a whole other justice system for poor people. That's not what we want. What we want is rational changes. Give judges the discretion to make some decisions. We don't want what we had just a few months ago where there's a body chopped up dropped in a park for children to find. And then our DA, who was a great DA, can't hold the person, right? Yeah. can't hold the, pe- the, the multiple people that were involved in that yeah. and had to actually bail them out and let them go free. It's ludicrous, Tom, yeah. absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. Like, make some rational changes to this law. Work across the aisle. Unfortunately, you don't get, you know, work across the aisle when you have a supermajority of one party in both houses and you have the absolute fringe running the show. We need to go back at, at the very least in this election. We need to break the supermajority uh, that the Democrats hold in the Senate. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do want to underscore the fact that uh, you ha- you do. And I think there's at least one Democrat that you that you did uh, endorse uh, during this last crop. So I, I think it's not it's not necessarily a, uh, a party affiliation. It's an ideology affiliation. It's a common sense affiliation uh, of what's to, to, to do. Right. And I think a lot more Democrats would join if they weren't yeah. being pressured by the New York City uh, uh, elites that put pressure on them as far as committee assignments and raising money for their nominations. Lou. Yeah, exactly right. I can tell you, you know, we endorsed uh, Assemblyman Steve Stern, and I, and I will tell you this, Tom, Steve Stern is, is one of the few Democrats that voted against bail reform. So bail reform was passed in the budget process, something that should, uh, you know, really not occur, but does. And he was one of the few uh, that voted against it. And we, we have endorsed him, and, uh, you know, he has been very supportive. And listen, we don't agree with him on everything. We don't agree with any of, any endorsed candidate. If you find it somebody that you agree with uh, 100% of the time, I think it was Ed Cross that said, right, there's, 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 there's probably somebody is uh, uh, mentally ill, right? Because right. it's right. just, uh, it, it's uncanny. It's, it's not a situation where you're always going to agree all the time with any of your endorsed candidates. Uh, you know, what you're looking for is for somebody that is, willing to give your argument a fair shake, is willing to consider all the issues, and is not going to cower, right? They're, they're not going to, you know, be a coward in the face of adversity. 
when you have these various uh, forces out there that are going to say, hey, if you don't do what we say, we'll call you a racist. We'll yeah, primary yeah, you. Yeah. You know, we, you can't have people right. that turn against their convictions because they're afraid. And right. unfortunately, that's what we had in some situations in the last few years where this anti-police sentiment was out there. Yeah. It was in vogue to hate, to hate the police, to yeah. want to defund us. Yeah. And you had some people that uh, just, uh, you know, bent the knee for it. And that, that we can't stand. Uh, Lou, I can't tell you how many uh, uh, text messages I just got with the thumbs up while you were talking for the last 20 minutes. So I have to say, uh, I, I, think, I think we're hitting a nerve with this right now. Once again, Lou Savillo, president of the Suffolk County PBA. Been very busy these weeks. Probably another busy week coming up. Lou, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again in a couple of weeks, my friend. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Tom. Okay. All right, we're going to take a short break. we got our DA coming up, uh, and a major trafficker arrested here in Suffolk County. He'll give us the uh, lowdown on that. All part of this political campaign, all part of the presidential race. I'm Tom Shalero. We'll be right back. (laughs) 